know that most of what you've seen, read, or heard about Billy the Kid is untrue? My name is Gail Cooper. I'm a medical doctor and forensic psychiatrist. My specialty is murder case consultation for the defense. For 20 years, I've used my expertise to uncover the real Billy the Kid. Researching over 40,000 pages of archival documents and books, I've written the revisionist history. It's shocking, it's liberating, and I've written books demolishing the hoaxes, hijacking the history. My talks will share with you what I've found. Cover-ups, misinformation, and fakery, to use Old West lingo, will bite the dust. This talk is about hoaxing from the get-go in Brushy Bill's book, Alias Billy the Kid. The information is from my book, Cracking the Billy the Kid, Imposter Hoax of Brushy Bill Roberts. You don't even have to open the Brushy Bill Hoax's 1955 book to get hoaxed. You just need to read its title alias Billy the Kid. The book is supposedly about Billy Bonnie, who late in life admits to having hidden out as a man named Brushy Bill Roberts, but now wants the pardon promised him in 1879 by Governor Lou Wallace. So the least one could expect is that Brushy would know Billy's alias. And Real Billy knew, back when that pardon was promised, that Billy the Kid was not his alias, meaning his assumed name. His alias was Billy Bonnie, which he made up right after his August 17, 1877 killing of Frank Windy Cahill in Arizona Territory and his escape to New Mexico Territory to start a new life. He would also know, as Brushy did not, that his birth name was Henry McCarty, which became Henry Antrim after his mother's 1873 marriage to William Henry Harrison Antrim. By that 1879 pardon bargain, Billy knew that the hated moniker, Billy the Kid, came from his outlaw myth branding by the Santa Fe Ring political cabal to capture or kill him as an anti-Ring freedom fighter. That Billy the Kid moniker is discussed in Talk 35, linked below. In his December 12, 1880 letter to Governor Lou Wallace, Billy objected to the moniker as part of the outlaw myth being created around him. He wrote, I noticed in the Las Vegas Gazette a piece which stated that Billy the Kid, the name by which I am known in the country, was the captain of a band of outlaws who hold forth at the Portales. There is no such organization in existence, so the gentleman must have drawn very heavily on his imagination. In fact, Kid was an affectionate nickname Billy had gotten from Tunstall's ranch hands when he was hired in October of 1877 at just 17. Since the premise of the Brushy Bill hoax and book was that Brushy had special knowledge proving he was Billy, Brushy got it wrong from the get-go. From his 1949 meeting with William V. Morrison, hoax mastermind, and alias Billy the Kid's second author, Brushy called himself Billy the Kid. That's why alias Billy the Kid's writer, historically ignorant C.L. Sonishin, used that title. So unknown to Brushy, Morrison, and Sonishin, Billy the Kid was not Billy Bonnie's alias. It was their fatal era number one. 
And, like all the other errors comprising the book, its prompt source can be traced. It's lifted from an alias Billy the Kid source footnote, a 1943 Frontier Times Magazine article titled A Story of Billy the Kid, which reprinted an August 10, 1881 outlaw myth article from the Laredo Times titled Killing of Billy the Kid. This fiction stated, Information from Lincoln County is that William Bonney, alias Billy the Kid, who escaped from Lincoln Jail on April 30 last, note that it was the 28th, while under sentence of death, has added three more victims to his already large list. There's more hoaxing on the front cover. Its dust jacket has Sonishin's quote. Was he Billy the Kid? If not, who was he? This implied that Brushy knew so much that he had to be Billy Bonney. To confirm Sonishin's willful deception, one needs to recall, as discussed in earlier talks, that Sonishin faked that special knowledge. He faked Brushy as illiterate to hide his reading up. He edited out Brushy's fatal flubs from Morrison's tape-recorded interviews, and he forged Brushy's words to better match Billy Bonney. So Sonishin did know the answer to, who was he? The answer was, not Billy the Kid. For more hoaxing, one just needs to flip over alias Billy the Kid's dust jacket. On its back are biographies of Sonishin and Morrison faking expertise. Sonishin, an English teacher, with doctorate in antique English language, posed as an historian as, quote, since 1931, when he took his Ph.D. at Harvard, C.L. Sonishin has been a dweller in and student of the Southwest, and his name is highly regarded by readers and scholars alike as a contributor to Southwestern law and letters. Morrison, a car parts and copier machine salesman, posed as a lawyer, excerpted as, quote, Attorney William V. Morrison knew that many famous and notorious men are said to have survived long after they were presumed dead. After he found evidence that Billy the Kid was living as Brushy Bill Roberts, he traced all legal documents on the case and represented Brushy Bill when he sought pardon in New Mexico. If one opens alias Billy the Kid, one tumbles down the rabbit hole into its fantastical alternative reality of pure hoaxing. The reader is greeted by the book's first major dupe, the book's publisher, University of New Mexico Press director Edward Beverly E.B. Mann, in his publisher's foreword, though he doesn't give his name. He's discussed in Talk 56, link below. Everything man writes is wrong. He begins with a quote. Was Billy the Kid really shot to death by Sheriff Pat Garrett that July night in 1881, or was someone else the victim? Man reveals his ignorance even of Brushy's contemporary events by citing the quote source as a Southwestern writer who stated the case for Brushy Bill Roberts, J.W. Hendren. In fact, historian J.W. Hendren was one of the Billy the Kid experts in Governor T.J. Mabry's November 30, 1950 pardon hearing who declared Brushy an imposter. Hendren's follow-up article titled No Pardon for Billy appeared in January 5, 1951's Highway Happenings magazine. Hendren wrote, 
At the onset of the Mabry interview, it was easy to see that this latest Billy the Kid had little conception of the facts about the Lincoln County War. Possibly, gullible man was given the quote by Morrison, who'd also tricked him, that he was a lawyer. Mann breathlessly continued that other famous dead people had rumored survival, but Brushy was, quote, one of the very few claimants whose claims have been subjected to careful, expert, extensive examination while he was still living. Mann added that, quote, readers of the manuscript have been amazed by what Brushy Bill knew, things never printed, things even in contradiction to the accepted stories since proved to have been the way Brushy Bill told them. Mann gave an example, writing, it was generally believed that there was a federal charge outstanding against Billy the Kid. Brushy Bill said the case was thrown out of court. The legal records when found proved Brushy Bill's statement. Ignorant man was unaware of Brushy's prompt source of Real Billy's April 15, 1881 letter to his attorney, Edgar Capeless, copied by Morrison from the Lincoln Museum, which stated, My United States case was thrown out of court and I was rushed to trial on my territorial charge. Billy was describing federal indictment number 411 against himself and other regulators for the killing of Andrew Buckshot Roberts at Blazer's Mill on April 4, 1878. But it was quashed on April 6, 1881, after Billy's March 30th Messiah hearing based on the technicality that Blazer's Mill, as private property within the Mescalero Reservation, was properly under territorial law, not federal law, like the reservation. One can also add that this correct argument had been made by Billy's loyal attorney, Ira Leonard, who since 1879 had also tried to get him his pardon, first through Lou Wallace, then the Secret Service. Tellingly, Brushy and team were fatally unaware of Ira Leonard, Billy's best friend in a high place. But nothing is more powerful than a dupe promoting a hoax, since it's with belief, not deceit. So starstruck E.B. Mann was the reader's greeter at the door. Next, dated March 10, 1955, comes Sonishin's and Morrison's statement to the reader in To the Skeptical. One now descends into the foul realm of real hoaxing. With Sonishin as writer, it lies that the book will quote, Let Brushy tell his own story without addition or subtraction and throw light on it with correspondence, eyewitness testimony, and official records. No attempt is made to highlight, select, or color Bill's statements. Note that Brushy did not call himself Bill. It was Brushy Bill. His actual name was Oliver Pleasant Roberts for the hoax, Sonishin and Morrison faked him as William Henry, Billy, or Bill to match Billy Bonney. Sonishin calls himself and Morrison, quote, his editors, one a lawyer, a lie, and the other a college professor, hidden as of English, not history, who would not willingly participate in deception. To be noted is that there is nothing more brazen than liars lying that they never lie. Next, slyly thanked to name drop real Billy the Kid historical experts to fake their connection to the book, 
are Robert N. Mullen, Maurice Garland Fulton, and Pat Garrett's son, Oscar Garrett. Added, though easily overlooked, is an aside that they all denied Brushy's claim. Hidden is that Oscar had threatened to sue if alias Billy the Kid was published since it defamed his father, Pat, as the unpunished murderer of an innocent victim instead of Billy the Kid, who despicably hid his crime to collect the reward. The talks to follow reveal alias Billy the Kid's unremitting hoaxing as Brushy's failed Billy the Kid impersonation in his gubernatorial pardon hearing is manipulatively rewritten, his posthumously edited and forged words are presented to better match Billy Bonney's, historical documents are misstated, phony conspiracy theories attack opponents, and faked affidavits claim Brushy was Billy. Mm -hmm.